Good afternoon. I hope everyone's doing well today uh, among, uh, with all the coronavirus chaos continuing. Um, it's kind of crazy all the different information out there. But in today's conversation, I'm not reading or reviewing any articles. I'm actually going to just utilize a golf analogy that I've been working on for the uh, for basically my entire career, but it's been coming to more fruition recently. So um, I, I use this a lot in my meetings, and hopefully it's polished enough to be talking about here in a video, and I won't get uh, ripped apart too much by anyone who listens or watches my con this conversation. Um, but I like to use uh, the utilize a golf analogy for anyone who knows me. They know I like to use I like to play golf and a lot of other sports, but I like to use a golf analogy when it comes to explaining financial planning. All right, so so often people have 401ks, IRAs, 403bs. They have all these different retirement tools that they consider to be plans, all right? And that's not a plan. Uh, and no offense to anyone who all has all of their money in their group 401k and that's their plan, but that's just one tool, all right? And so what I mean by that, and, what, and let me explain what I mean by that. So if you play golf, um, I relate the stock market to your driver, all right? So your driver is the club that hopefully we can hit the farthest, right? So it has the most potential gain from off the tee or wherever you're hitting it from, but it also has the highest risk, right? If you hit your driver 250 through to 300 yards and it goes dead straight on the fairway, great. But if you miss your if you miss on the swing and it goes right or left, you're in, you're more likely to get in trouble. And that's the same way the stock market works. All right, the stock market has the of the many tools out there uh, for most people. You know, there are things like borrowing on margin, shorting the market, and things like that. So there you can get more in depth, but, but for the common person, for most people. The stock market is the riskiest play we have uh, or that we utilize. It has the highest potential for gain rate of return, but it also has the highest risk. So if you shank your drive in this case, it's like the stock market the last three weeks, right? We saw gains from the last four years basically get completely wiped out in a matter of two or three weeks. So that's your driver. And so often I hear people say, Oh, I'm diversified. I have my Roth IRA, I have my 401k, and I have mutual funds through a brokerage account. Well, that's good. I'm happy to hear that. But when you really break it down from a simple standpoint, all three of those resources, whether it's your 401k, your 403b, your IRAs, or your mutual funds, or even if you just like, like to pick stocks individually, those are all primarily dependent on the stock market. And how much control do we have of the stock market? None, virtually. It's completely dependent on politics, other people's emotions, and unexpected world events like COVID-19. So in my opinion, they all are pretty, pretty much grouped together from a, a, from a driver standpoint that they're all driven by the stock market. Now there's some varying degrees of risk from, your drive, from a, in, trying to time indivi individual stocks versus investing in large mutual funds. So maybe one could argue that Picking individual stocks as your driver and mutual funds could be maybe your hybrid or your wood, but generally speaking, that's where they, that's where they all fall in is your drivers and your woods. On the other side of the spectrum, we have a putter in our, in our golf bag, right? And I think pretty obvious, a putter would be like your checking account. You're, very, you're, you're not going to lose money. It's very unlikely you're going to use your putter to hit a ball into a hazard, but it's also very unlikely it's going to go very far, right? So your checking account doesn't grow a lot, but it also doesn't get you in trouble. And even though checking accounts aren't that most exciting thing in the world, when is it really convenient to have a lot of liquid cash in a checking account? Times like this, when there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, the stock market's crashed 30% in the last three weeks, and basically we don't really know what's coming next. It's really valuable to have checking. I mean, it's really valuable to have safe liquid cash. Would you agree? So with that in mind, most people's financial plans consist of their retirement accounts, depend on the stock market, and their checking accounts. So using my golf analogy, they have drivers and they have a putter. Would you ever go and intentionally start a round of golf with just a driver and a putter? I know I wouldn't. Wouldn't it be helpful to have some clubs somewhere in between your driver and your putter that are a little more flexible, consistent, and I guess just usable in different situations like out of a bunker or out of a hazard, right? So we don't really, we don't want to be limited in what our options and only using drivers and putters. But unfortunately, because of the sales pitch that's been given to so many people for so long, that's what we, that's what a lot of people believe are their only options, the stock market and checking accounts. Right. I mean, so 
what I'm, what I guess what I'm trying to get at is if you would, if you would never go start a round of golf with only a driver and a putter, do you think it's fair to you yourself to attempt your financial plan, your financial future with only the stock market and a checking account? All right. So if you think it'd be valuable to, to at least have the option to purchase other clubs or utilize additional strategies for your planning, whether that's from a tax planning perspective or a diversification perspective or a retirement income perspective, there's so many tools out there, but what's really the most important is the strategy that's used around those tools. All right, so here's an easy one that I'm sure you've, you've heard some variation of at some point, but if you haven't, here's, here, here, I'll, I'll give it to you here. Would you rather have Tiger Woods' skill in your golf clubs or Tiger Woods' golf clubs but your skill? Almost anyone I ask that question of, they look at me like I'm dumb and they go, well, obviously I'd rather have Tiger Woods' skill because Tiger Woods could kick my butt and most people's butt with the worst golf clubs because it comes down to strategy and skill. So from a financial planning standpoint, do you think it's more important to focus on the strategy or just be sold a product? Because unfortunately, my industry has done a really poor job for a really long time only trying to sell you the brand new shiny driver or the brand new shiny clubs rather than focusing how are we playing, on how are we playing the game to be as efficient as possible for you. So hopefully today's analogy was impactful for you. Um, I know for it's a lot clearer in my mind than maybe I made it. Um, when trying to explain it, but hopefully the, the point gets across and hopefully I brought you value. Please let me know what you think by reaching out. Um, as always, I, I really, really appreciate when people take the time to not only watch and listen to my videos and conversations, but also comment, uh, reach out directly and or share with a friend. So thanks again for your time. Hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck with all the COVID-19 chaos. Thanks. Bye.